Awesome by Stillwater Design. And Jerry, we've got two-time world champ Tom Martin here, but remember, one year ago at this event, he was upset by a relatively unknown driver from right here in Baltimore, Bush Croft. Right now, it's Henry Marciani with the Rat Trap, a fuel-injected Chevy-powered 1932 Ford. Well, perhaps some of those uh, at home are tuning in for the very first time in the racing. And we want you to point out to you that there's an 80 foot to start, 80 feet to stop, so that the, the actual racing course itself is only 80 feet long. Wow! Did you see that spread? I'll tell you what, from men to first your tail above, Marciani is happy with that one. He stops it within the required 80 foot of shutdown area that you just talked about. There's the elapsed time, 2.09 seconds. Believe it or not, that is a career best for Henry Marciani, and that indicates to me, Jerry, that we're looking at a fast fit. That's right. Now, as it gets a little bit uh, sloppier down at the finish line, that uh, 80 foot to stop is going to come into play a little bit more. This is the wild side, Ryan Driscoll. Oh, ho, ho. he just blazed off of the uh, finish line uh, poles there. Brand new lowrider 1948 Fiat Topolino with Chevrolet power, 2.37 seconds. The elapsed time for the 80-foot course. Remember that we'll be qualifying the four quickest drivers for the overall championship battle. All right, this is Hellfire, Pat Riley. That's right, the four fast will come back again in the shootout. This is one of your favorites, Jerry. The supercharged small block Chevy makes noise like no other vehicle. Oh, it's high winding. Listen to it. Oh, he does the job. On the brakes hard. We don't seem to have any problem uh, with stopping in that 80 feet distance, but as you pointed out, Jerry, when it gets slippery, it's going to be rough. 2.16 seconds. That'll put the Hellfire entry and Pat Riley into the number two spot right now. And the next driver down will give us a bumping procedure with four cars in. Well, earlier we talked to our next racer, Jim Weber. And we asked Jim, what is it going to take to win tonight's event? I think what it's going to take to win tonight is going to be a real early number. And get out early before the line goes away. A good run, and of course what he's talking about is drawing the, the starting position, one through whatever number we have here tonight. Before the starting line itself actually starts to get slippery and starts to lose traction at 2.03 seconds, though, that's the quickest run so far. Here's John Eppel, a supercharger for the first time at our last event in the contents under pressure chief from New Jersey. Looks like that finish line, Brett, should be getting a little slick. Tackles down a place. Here we go. Wow! Whoa! He took out the finish line. What a tough break for Apple. Enough power to yank the front wheels four feet in the air off the starting line, but then the machine gets uncontrollable, and despite a 2.17 second ride, he just center punches that finish line pole. And you go past the uh, boundary banners on each side of the course. You're out of bounds. You're disqualified. And rolling to the starting line now is the instant tee given by Chad Miller. The young man we saw go upside down at uh, Tampa Stadium earlier this year, and he is back with a man for the Super Charge Street Roaster out of Ohio. The mark to beat to get into the quick four right now, 2.16 seconds. He can run that quick and bunch of them. Good run. Great run. Miller, though, hard on the brakes, trying to stay in bounds, and it looks like he just barely did it. Then again, it doesn't look like he's too happy. Watch these street legal tires swing the mud out of the tread and then hook up the elapsed time. 2.062 seconds. Hard on the brakes down there in the shutdown. And he rolls over the disqualification line. Hopefully it was to my advantage as far as throwing an early number in the competition, considering there's so many trucks, and hopefully I'll have a straight shot. And I'd also like to tell all the females out there that I'm doing doing something that's very unusual and hopefully releasing a lot of pressure for everybody else. Oh, and she's out of bounds. The sports only female driver in super modified mud racing, Marcy Laurie from New Hampshire in the Granite State Outlaw. 2.631 second run. But watch her hard on the brakes in the AMC powered machine. 
didn't hit it by much. He hit it by enough. That's the second disqualification in this qualifying round. Here is the defending champion and the man who beat Tom Martin at this event one year ago. Foot Frost from right here in Baltimore in the incredible Mudmaster 1932-4. And this is a strong running machine. You might remember last year he was driving a black Jeep. He changed to a body and chassis style very similar to Tom Martin's, except this year a supercharged fuel-injected methanol-burning Chevy. The Mudmaster. Good run! No question about it. Look how early he stopped on that pass. He had to go quicker than 2.16 to get in. Look at the last time. The quickest ever here at the Baltimore Arena. 1.90 seconds. Jerry, I can't believe he ran 190 and stopped that thing so quick. That is something. All right, coming up next, the Mud Cruiser, Jay Thomas. Thomas, a relative newcomer to the U.S. Harvard Association National Event Trail. He's holding his arms out of the roll cage so that the ground crew can see that he is not touching any controls while they connect the kill switch. Notice the kill switch is running on a cable over the cars, right over the track uh, here at Baltimore. Now, they'll still shut the engine off right at that 80-foot finish line, regardless. He has to go quicker than 2.0, 9 seconds. He's getting a feel. It's already one of the quickest we've ever seen, the Chevy-powered Mud Cruiser. Another good run. Can he stop? I mean, he does it. Tell you what, there is nothing wrong with the starting line here. Very little tire spin. 2.20 seconds is an excellent pass for this young driver. It won't be enough to get him in the quick four right now, however. Like I said, we're already dealing with one of the quickest fields ever. About 10 feet from those bands. Rolling to the starting line next will be the Dream Weaver with Warren Weaver behind the control. A homemade machine. And a very heavy one at that. It is one of the heavier vehicles in competition. It's one of the last of the high center of gravity mud racers. Oh, and Warren Weaver has some problems. That was uh, basically just a backfire through the single four-barrel carburetor on this Chevy-powered machine. And uh, it was enough to kill the motor. And Warren Weaver looking down saying, did I blow my chance? Unfortunately, the word is, you did. Watch the carburetor. Black circle on top of the hood. You see the pop. Apparently an intake valve hanging open, just backfiring through the carburetor, and that was enough to put him right out of it. Well, it's the gun smoke, Rich Marcy. Competitor. It's a straight run, but a little bit slow. Down on power for the New Jersey campaigner of another high center gravity machine, 2.76 seconds in the LCM one It almost looked like uh, the machine just didn't even have enough power to keep the tires up out of the mud, and that, of course, is the key here. All right, this will be the kicker, Jeremy Finley. This machine debuted at the beginning of the season, and it's got a bunch of power. It's a very surprising machine. Barely. Well, I'll tell you, you watch the front end flopping around on this thing. It's 2.33 seconds. The nitrous oxide injected Chevy power Jeep. Uh, if you want to secure that front end fiberglass a little better next time, he stops it in time, but he won't qualify for the quick four. Here is a wild one. Coming up next, you're about to see the hot tuna Fiat, one of the wildest mud racers in the world. Stay with us. The most popular, most gorgeous, and scariest mud racers, Bob Heisner's Maryland Base. Short wheelbase, 1948 Fiat Topolino, supercharged fuel injected methanol Chevy power. Look at the flames coming out of the exhaust headers. If, and I do stress, if it goes straight, it can put down some big runs. Get ready, race fans. This is she fly. Hot tuna! Sideways in, he gets it stopped. The short wheelbase Fiat, one of the shortest wheelbases in mud racing. It's easy to put sideways if you're looking to pick up some extra distance down there. 2.36 seconds, but there's the reason why. He had to drive it away from the outer boundary line on the left side of the track. Look at him, staring at that banner, putting her sideways. It's Melvin Brown with Red Heat. We talked to Melvin a little bit earlier tonight. What's it going to take to win? I think tonight it'll take a uh, real good number and uh, a lot of uh, tire speed, good launch. 
Stop and Bounce. 